In this episode, we're talking text. I'm going to show you how to create text inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm going to show you three different text animation styles right inside of Adobe Premiere. So let's get into it. In Adobe Premiere Pro, there are two different ways of creating titles. So the first is the legacy title option. So we can go up into file, new, legacy title, you can rename this to your title of choice. And then inside this window, all you have to do is just select anywhere, type out a phrase or your word or whatever you want to type out. And then of course you just change the font size. You change the shape. You can make this bold. You can increase the size, add some kerning, add some line height. You can add your different paragraph center alignments or your left alignments or right alignments. And of course you've got the center buttons down here on the left and the right. And then over here, you've got legacy title properties. So you've got your opacity, X position, Y position, width, height, rotation. You've got all of the properties for the text. You've got your fill color here and you can also add stroke colors by selecting add stroke. And then of course you can change the stroke color to whatever you fancy. Then we've got drop shadow and a background. And then of course we've got all of these different presets, which is your legacy title styles. Now, if you're editing on Adobe Premiere CS three, four, five, or maybe even six or the early version of CC, then you're probably going to see this title window. And this is how you're going to create your text. But if you're on newer versions of Premiere, rather than creating your text that way, all you have to do is just press the T icon on this bar. So you've got your selection tool, you've got your razor tool and all these different tools here. But if you just press T, or you can quite simply just press T on the keyboard to load up the type tool, just select anywhere on this black video. And then that's going to load up a new window on effect controls. So you've got the text window now appearing in your video graphic section. So let's just expand the size of this for now. So let's just type out what we want to type again. So we're going to do AE juice again. Now we can go back to our cursor and we can move the position of this using our cursor, but we're going to go over to the left and you can see we've got these masks here, but we'll come back to masking in a future episode. Source text, and this is the font. So we can change the font here. So let's go for a veneer. We'll change the weight of this font by selecting light and changing this to black or heavy. We'll increase the size of this. We'll center align this and move the position of this over into the middle. And of course you've got all of these other settings here. So you've got your kerning here. So this is just adding spaces between the letters. So you can increase this or decrease this. I quite like it decreased. It looks quite nice crowded. And then moving down, you've got your fill color, your stroke color, your background color, your shadow color, you've got your opacity. You've got rotation, you've got all of these other settings here. And then just under that, you've got your normal position, scale, rotation, opacity, and anchor points. So that is how you create basic text inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you wanted to create a lower third, for example, we just move that into the lower third. So let's just go for a name. So let's go Chris B, that is me. We'll go back to our cursor tool, move that where we want that. And then we can go ahead and create a new title. So we'll press T again and we'll do the subtitle. So we'll go videographer. So we'll select that videographer layer. And as you can see, a new title has been made. So we've got text Chris B, that is the name. And then you've got text videographer. So we'll open the videographer level, pull the size of this down. We'll reduce the weight of this. So let's go for medium, pull this down even more somewhere around there. Can change the fill color if you like so let's make this like a nice it's subtle but add a little bit of yellow there and then we'll just add this underneath like so now that is how you would make a basic text layer or lower third inside of adobe premiere but the problem is it's not doing anything it's not animating there's no movement there it's just a little bit boring so of course you could animate the opacity or the scale to animate in over time but again, that might be a little bit too boring. So I'm going to show you three different text animation techniques that you can apply to your text to create dynamic text inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So first of all, let's begin with glitch text. 
Now, in order to do this effect, we want to make sure that we've got the red, green, and blue channels separated. So we want a blue text, a green text, and a red text of this exact same text layer. We'll hold option on the keyboard and drag that text layer up. Hold option again and drag two up to three. So we should now have three versions of that text layer. Now select all of those layers. We'll go into effects and search for RGB. And that should load up color balance RGB. Now we'll drop that onto our text layers. We'll go onto the top layer, go into color balance RGB and we'll pull the green down to zero. We'll pull the blue down to zero. So that should now be red. Then it's really important that you change the opacity from normal to screen. Next, we'll go down to the second layer. Now you want to make sure that the green is the only color here. So we'll pull the red down to zero. We'll pull the blue down to zero. And then again, we'll pull this to screen. Now we'll go to the bottom layer and we want to pull red to zero, green to zero and blue to stay at 100. Or if it says 39, that is also fine as well. And we can keep the blend mode as normal. So as you can see, if I pull the position of this layer up, you can see we've got blue text, red text, and then we've also got green text. So that looks great. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this glitching effect. So we'll go to one of these layers. We'll go to any one of them. Let's select the top one. We'll go onto our motion, create a brand new keyframe on position and scale. We'll go five keyframes to the right. So one, two, three, four, five new keyframe on scale and position. We'll go in between those. So somewhere around here, we'll increase the scale to 105. We'll move the position up. And when we play this back, we've got this cool glitching effect happening. If we select all of those keyframes that we just created, we'll go command C to copy or control C if you're on windows, then we'll go command V or control V and just paste in those keyframes over time. So we've got this really cool pulsing glitch effect on this text. Of course, you don't have to animate this if we turn off all of those keyframes. So we'll delete all of those keyframes. You can just keep this as a static. So we'll increase the scale. We'll pull the position of this down a touch like so. And you can just keep it like this. But I do think it's quite nice to have that animation there. So we'll just pull that animation back like so. Then we'll go down to the next layer. We'll go into effects and we're going to search for warp. So W A R P. And then we're going to drop wave warp onto this layer. Now wave warp is one of my favorite plugins inside of Adobe Premiere Pro because you can do quite a lot with wave warp because you can change the wave type and then you can also create some really cool different effects. So in wave warp, we'll go to wave type and change this to square. As you can see, that's looking a bit more glitchy. And as you can see, if I increase the wave height, it's creating this effect. And if I increase the wave width, it's creating this effect. So the wave width is what we want to animate. So we'll go to the very beginning. We'll create a brand new keyframe on wave width. We'll move a few frames over. Create a brand new keyframe on the wave width again. Then we'll go in between those two keyframes, pull this down. And then we'll just copy those keyframes. So copy all of those and we'll move over and just paste those keyframes in. So when we play this back, you can see we've got this cool glitching effect now happening, which I think looks really good. And then of course you can always go down to the bottom layer, the blue layer, and you can adjust the scale. You can animate the rotation. You can animate all of these other aspects, or you can drop more effects onto this layer. It's completely up to you. But that is the first text animation that I'm showing you. That is the glitch effect. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different text effect. So we'll delete those two top layers, go to that text layer and we'll delete the color balance and we'll reset back to normal. So now I'm going to show you a really awesome transition. So this is a drop in or a pop up transition. So we'll go for a pop up. So we'll go roughly a second in, go to position in motion, then we'll go Let's go 10 frames to the left, roughly. So somewhere around here, and then we'll pull the position of this layer down. Now we'll go past that second keyframe to here and we'll create a brand new keyframe on position. And then we'll go to that second keyframe again and we'll pull the position up. So essentially it's starting down here, it's bouncing up and then bouncing into position. So if we play this back, that's how this looks. Of course, if that was a bit too slow for you, then you can always decrease the gap between those keyframes again. 
and you get this really cool effect. Again, like we talked about in a previous episode, we're going to add our temporal interpolation. So we'll select all of these keyframes, we'll right click one of those, go to temporal interpolation and select ease in. And that's just going to smooth out that animation like so. So from here, we need to get rid of the text down here. So at the moment, it looks like it's waiting and we need to get rid of that. So we're going to touch on masking here. So at this third keyframe here, we're just going to go down to the pen tool or alternatively, you can go to the pen tool here, the free draw Bezier, select that. And we're just going to draw a rectangle around this text like so. Then we'll just select toggle animation here. So we'll select toggle animation. We'll go back in time, create a brand new keyframe on mask path. Then we'll go back to that first keyframe. And if we select mask one, you can see the mask has traveled with the text, but we want to pull the position of that mask up, select mask path, and then we'll just move the position of this mask up. So we'll just drag that up like so. So that means when we play this back, the mask is not traveling with the text. We need to move this down here. So that mask is no longer traveling with the text, which means it's going to reveal as it pops up. So that is how you create that effect. And of course, the really cool thing is if you were to do this for each individual character, you could stagger them to come on at different times. So you could do this for the A, the E, the J, the U, the I, the C and the E and then just offset them by two keyframes. And then each individual letter will animate on at a slightly different time and it will look really awesome. But that is how you create this pop-up animation inside of Premiere. So we're gonna move on to number three. And the third text animation that I'm going to show you is going to involve a new solid and we're going to introduce masking again. Now we are going to talk about masking in a future episode, but we're just touching on it in this episode to show you how to do these text animations. So we've got our text here and we just basically want to reveal our text with a shape layer. So we're just going to create a brand new black solid. So we'll go back to the project tab. We'll right click somewhere here and we'll go new item black video, or alternatively, you can create a color matte. It's completely up to you, but we'll go for color matte on this one press OK. And we've got all of these different colors here. So we can select a specific color of our choice. So I'm going to go for an orange. So I'm going to go for this color here. We'll press OK. We can rename this to orange if you like. And then we'll just drop this onto our composition. So as you can see, I've got this orange layer here like so. Now to make life easy for ourselves, I'm just going to pull the opacity of this orange layer down. So we'll go to opacity and pull this down to around 50%. Now we can begin animating the orange solid. So we'll go into motion, go to scale. Then we're going to unlink uniform scale because at the moment, if we pull the scale down, it's going to scale down the horizontal and the vertical axis. But if we uncheck uniform scale, we can adjust the height and we can adjust the width independently. So I'm gonna start by pulling down the scale height to roughly the same height as the text. So somewhere around here, just going to pull the position of this down to match up the center of here. And then from here, I'm just going to move the anchor point, which is currently in the middle. I'm going to move the anchor point over to the very left. So I move the anchor point over to that left. If you need to zoom in to see what you're doing, go to fit and zoom into this respected number. So I'm going to go to 200, move the anchor point to zero. And now that is sitting where I need it to sit. So we we'll move the position of this over to the left, somewhere around here, and we'll zoom back out. Now from here, we're going to go into scale width and we'll pull this down. So we'll start at zero, create a brand new keyframe on scale width. Then we'll go roughly 10 frames to the right. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll increase the scale width. And now from here, we're just going to go to the third point, create a brand new keyframe, and we'll change the scale width down to around here. There you go, like so. So this bounces on and then slowly falls back into position. But from here, I'm just going to select all of those keyframes, right click one of those, go ease in, and that looks a lot nicer. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to 
animate this text to animate on at the same time as this orange solid is animating on as well. So we're going to turn the opacity of this layer back up to 100% and then we're going to put the text layer above the orange layer like so. And of course, if for some reason you don't like the look of that text, you can always go back into the text layer and you can change the font color. You can get rid of the shadow. You can add a stroke if you like, and you can increase the stroke by just pulling up this layer here. But once you're happy with that, you can go back onto this workflow and we're going to animate this to come on with the orange box. So to do that, we're just going to go to opacity, select the free draw bezier tool, and we're just going to create a mask around the left of the frame. So somewhere around here. Then we'll go into mask path and we'll create a new keyframe on the mask path. Then we'll go a frame to the right and then we'll pull these two points on the mask path over. And again, you might have to zoom in. So move this point over and then we'll also move this point over as well to follow this orange box. And you just want to keep repeating this process frame by frame, just adjusting this mask so that the text reveals at the same time that the box is transitioning on. And then once it's on, you don't have to worry about this later on. So that's the last time I have to do that. We'll zoom out and we'll play this back and the text animates on at the same time as the orange box. So that is really awesome. And there you go. That is how you make text inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And those are three different text animation examples that you can use for your project whether it be the glitch effect, the pop-up, or this bar transition, either one of these text effects are going to make for a really awesome text layer in your video. In the next episode, we'll delve deeper into the world of masking, and I'll show you how you can use masking to create really awesome effects inside of your project. See you there.